So when you know, if you watch yourself, you say, well, I had a particularly good day at work. And what does that mean? Well, it means that you lost your sense of time. Right? Because when you're having not a good day at work, it's like, first it's one minute to three, and then it's 45 seconds to three, and then it's 30 seconds. That's what school was like for me. It was like, click. <laughs> it's so funny, you know, I went to, I went to my daughter's school. <laughs> I used to get in trouble for talking all the time. Surprise, surprise. When I was a kid, and, uh, and I was bored stiff in school. And, and so I would misbehave upon occasion, out of pure boredom. And about 21 years ago, I went to my daughter's school to sit for a class. It was about an hour long. And uh, I was sitting there, and the teacher had all the kids on the floor and was having some of the kids read to the others, and some of the kids who were reading couldn't read at all. And I had exactly the same experience. I was sitting there. It was like being, it was like being seven years old again. I could see the clock going, tick, <laughs> tick. And I thought, you know, if I was in this classroom for three days, I would misbehave, 40 years old, I would misbehave exactly like I did when I was, when I was six. No. Well, that's no place to be, right? Because that's... You don't want to be in a place that's stultifying. You don't want to be in a place where there's no challenge. You might even quit your job if there's no challenge. Say, well, that's a good job. It gives you security. And you think, God, I can't stand this. It's eating away at my soul. It's all security and no challenge. So why do you want a challenge? Because that's what you're built for. That's what you're built for. You're built to take on a maximal load, right? Because that's what strengthens you. And you need to be strong because life is extraordinarily difficult. And because the evil king is always whittling away at the structure of the state. And you have to be awake and sharp to stop that from happening. So that you don't become corrupt. And so that your family doesn't become corrupt. And so that your state doesn't have to become, be, be, become corrupt. You have to have your eyes open and your wits sharp and your words at the ready. And you have to be educated. And you have to know about your history. And you know how, have to know how to think. And you have to know how to read. And you have to know how to speak. And you have to know how to aim and you have to be willing to hoist the troubles of the world up on your shoulders. And what's so interesting about that, so remarkable, and, and this is something that's really manifested itself to me as I've been doing these public lectures. I've been talking about responsibility to people, which doesn't seem to happen very often anymore. And the audiences are dead quiet. And I lay out this idea that life is tragedy tainted by malevolence. And everyone says, yeah, well, we already s always suspected that. But no one has ever said it quite so bluntly. And it's quite a relief to hear that I'm not the only person who has those suspicions. And then the second part of that is the better part, and it's the optimistic part, which is despite the fact that life is a tragedy tainted by malevolence, at every level of existence, there's something about the human spirit that can thrive under precisely those conditions if we allow that to occur because as difficult as life is and as horrible as we are our capacity to deal with that catastrophe and to transcend that malevolent spirit is more powerful than the than that reality itself and that's the fundamental issue i think that's the fundamental issue of the Judeo-Christian ethic with its emphasis on the divinity of the individual as catastrophic as life is and as malevolent as people can be and that's malevolent beyond belief fundamentally. The, a person has in spirit the nobility to set that right and to defeat evil and that, and that more than that and that the antidote to the catastrophe of life and the suffering of life and the tragedy of life that can drive you down and destroy you is to take on exactly that responsibility and to say, well, there's plenty of work to be done and isn't that terrible and there isn't anything so bad that we can't make it worse and certainly try very hard to do so, but I have it within me to decide that I'm going to stand up against that. I'm going to strive to make the world a better place. I'm going to strive to constrain the malevolence that's in my own heart and to set my family straight and to work, to work despite my tragic lot for the betterment of, anything, of everything that's in front of me. And the consequence of that, the immediate consequence of that, is that when you make the decision to take on all of that voluntarily, 
which is to stand up straight, by the way, with your shoulders back, to take on that, all that on voluntarily. As soon as you make that decision, then all the catastrophe justifies itself in the nobility of your striving. And that's what it means to be an individual. Thank you. <laughs>